world was thus born. It was Nelson's uncle Winthrop Aldrich who had been crucial in convincing Eisenhower to even run for president. The whole Rockefeller family, and with them the Rockefeller empire, had solidly backed Eisenhower. Asking Rockefeller for help with the alien problem was to be the biggest mistake Eisenhower ever made for the future of the United States and most probably all of humanity, as you will soon see. What he literally did with this act, ladies and gentlemen, is abdicate the presidency to a secret group. Within one week of Eisenhower's election, he had appointed Nelson Rockefeller chairman of a presidential advisory committee on government organization. Rockefeller was responsible for planning the reorganization of the government. New Deal programs went into one single cabinet position called the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. When the Congress approved the new cabinet position in April of 1953, Nelson was named to the post of undersecretary to Ovita Culp Hobby. In 1953, also, astronomers discovered large objects in space which were moving toward the Earth, and it was first believed that they were asteroids. However, if you know much about astronomy, you know that you can predict or project or project backward orbital paths of bodies in space and determine where they come from, what they're doing, where they're going, and what their orbital path really is. Well, this failed to pan out, and the evidence proved that the objects could only be spaceships intelligently guided. Project Sigma intercepted alien communications, and when the objects reached the Earth, they took up a very high orbit around the equator. There were several huge ships, and their actual intent was unknown. Project Sigma and a new Project Plato through radio communications using the computer binary language, which the aliens understand very well, they're very mathematical minded, was able to arrange a landing that eventually resulted in face-to-face -face contact with alien beings from another planet. Project Plato was tasked with establishing diplomatic relations with this race of space aliens. But in the meantime, something else happened. In the meantime, a race of human-looking aliens contacted the United States government. Where this happened, I do not know. I wish that I did. This alien group warned us against the aliens that were orbiting the equator and offered to help us with our spiritual development. They demanded that we dismantle and destroy our nuclear weapons as the major condition. They refused to exchange technology, citing that we were spiritually unable to handle the technology which we then possessed, and has not that been true throughout our history. They believed that we would use any new technology to destroy each other, as we always have. This race stated that we were on a path of self-destruction and we must stop killing each other, stop polluting the earth, stop raping the earth's natural resources, and learn to live in harmony with each other and with nature. These terms were met with extreme suspicion, especially the major condition of nuclear armament, disarmament, and I have to say that I could not blame them in the face of so many uncertainties and so many alien surprises staring them directly in the face. It was believed that meeting that condition would leave us helpless in the face of an obvious alien threat. We also had nothing in history to help with the decision. Nuclear disarmament was not considered to be within the best interest of the United States, and the overtures were rejected. Later in 1954, the race of large-nosed gray aliens which had been orbiting the Earth landed at Holloman Air Force Base. It happened in 1954, ladies and gentlemen. If you take everything that Bob Immenegger has ever said and subtract 10 years from it, you will be right on the money. A basic agreement was reached. An alien named Krill was left as a pledge that they would return and formalize the agreement. In fact, he was a hostage. This race identified themselves as originating from a planet around a red star in the constellation of Orion, which we call Betelgeuse. I believe that that's a lie. They lie a lot, and they deceive a lot. And it is evident through every action that they've ever done with us. The truth is, ladies and gentlemen, these creatures might be from Mars, really. They claim that they are from a planet which revolves around the red star, which we call Betelgeuse. They stated that their planet was dying and that at some unknown future time they would no longer be able to survive there. This led to a second landing at Edwards Air Force Base. The historical event had been planned in advance and details of the treaty had already been agreed upon. Eisenhower arranged to be in Palm Springs on vacation. On the appointed day, the president was spirited away to the base and the excuse was given to the press that he was visiting the dentist for a toothache. 
President Eisenhower met with the aliens and a formal treaty between the alien nation and the United States of America was signed. We then received our first alien ambassador from outer space, his name and title, and I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's absolutely true. His name and title was His Omnipotent Highness Krill, pronounced Krill, spelled K-R-L-L-L -L -L or C-R-L-L-L. -L -L. In the American tradition of disdain for royal titles, he was secretly called Original Hostage Krill, or O-H Krill, so that Americans would not have to say, Your Omnipotent Highness. You should know that the alien flag is known as the trilateral insignia. It looks like a TP with two circles on either side of the V and one pole running straight down the middle. It is displayed on their craft and worn on their chest on their uniforms. Both of these landings in the second meeting were filmed and the film exists today. Where it exists, I do not know, but I do know that it exists. The treaty stated, the aliens would not interfere in our affairs, and we would not interfere in theirs. We were particularly interested that they do not interfere with anything that would affect our future, which has been violated. We would keep their presence on Earth a secret. They would furnish us with advanced technology and would help us in our technological development. They would not make any treaty with any other Earth nation. They could abduct humans on a limited and periodic basis for the purpose of medical examination and monitoring of our development with the stipulation that the humans would not be harmed would be returned to their point of abduction, that the humans would have no memory of the event, and that the alien nation would furnish MJ-12 with a list of all human contacts and abductees on a regularly scheduled basis, and this is not being done. It was agreed that each nation would receive the ambassador of the other for as long as the treaty remained in force. It was further agreed that the alien nation and the United States would exchange 16 personnel each to the other with the purpose of learning each of the other. The alien guests would remain on Earth, and the human guests would travel to the alien point of origin for a specified period of time, then return, at which point a reverse exchange would be made. I have no knowledge whatsoever of what happened to those original 16 humans who left the Earth with the aliens. It was also agreed that bases would be constructed underground for the use of the alien nation, and that two bases would be constructed for the joint use of the alien nation and the United States government. The base at Dulce is one. The base at S-4 in the area known as Area 51 or Dreamland is the second. Exchange of technology would take place in the jointly occupied bases. These alien bases would be constructed under Indian reservations in the four corners of Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona, and one would be constructed in Nevada in the area known as S-4, located approximately seven miles south of the western border of Area 51, otherwise known as Dreamland. All alien areas are under complete control of the Naval Department, and all personnel who work in these complexes receive their checks from the Navy. Construction of the bases began immediately, but progress was slow until large amounts of money were made available in 1957, and in the meantime, work continued on the Yellow Book with the information derived from the guests. <coughs> I would like to say at this time that the movie that most of you may have seen, how many of you saw Close Encounters of the Third Kind? That movie was absolutely true. Those events did take place not exactly as you saw them, not in the place where you saw them take place, but there was a landing, there was an agreement, there was conversation, there was an exchange of personnel made. I would like to say now also that J. Allen Hynek was the technical director on that movie, and he was also the co-author of Grudge 13, which I read between the years 1970 and 1973, along with another man named Lieutenant Colonel Friend. As you learned last night, it's the real nice guys that get you. Right, Phil? <laughs> Project Red Light was formed, and experimentation and test flying alien craft was begun in earnest. As I told you earlier, many of the craft we recovered were intact, appeared to have no damage whatsoever. One craft actually exploded over the test site, during testing, sometime in the early 60s, I'm not sure what the exact date is, uh, but the explosion is said to have been seen over three states. Project Red Light, according to the information that I have, was postponed at that time because they had no idea what had happened or why the craft had exploded, but they lost the pilots, and the project went on hold. A super top secret facility was built at Groom Lake in Nevada in the midst of the weapons test range. It was codenamed Dreamland until this area was built. 
Testing was done at the Tonopah test range, and that's why some of you have conflicting information. The installation was placed under the Department of the Navy, and clearance of all personnel required a Q clearance as well as executive, which means presidential or majestic approval. This is ironic due to the fact that the President of the United States does not have clearance to visit the site. Many of you did not know that. The President of the United States cannot enter Area 51. There are very many other areas which he cannot enter also. The alien base and exchange of technology actually took place in an area known as S-4. Area S-4 was codenamed the Dark Side of the Moon. The Army was tasked to form a super secret organization to furnish security for all alien task projects. This organization became the National Reconnaissance Organization based at Fort Carson, Colorado. The specific teams trained to secure the projects were called Delta. A second project, codenamed Snowbird, was promulgated to explain away any sightings of the red light craft as being Air Force experiments. The Snowbird craft were manufactured using conventional technology and were flown for the press on several occasions, and those of you who are my age or older will remember, as children or young adults, going to the movie and seeing in the movie tone newsreel the Avro car and other strange-looking saucer craft that were developed by the United States and the Canadian Armed Forces as a pro part of Project Snowbird. Project Snowbird was also used to debunk legitimate public sightings of alien craft, also called UFOs. Project Snowbird was very successful, and reports from the public declined steadily until recent years. But not just due to Project Snowbird. There was an intense ridicule, denial, and debunking campaign going on since the beginning. People stopped reporting what they saw. A multi-million dollar secret fund was organized and kept by the military office of the White House. This fund was used to build over 75 deep underground facilities. Presidents who asked were told the fund was used to build deep underground shelters for the president in case of war. Only a few were built for the president. Millions of dollars were funneled through this office to MJ-12 and then out to the contractors and was used to build top secret alien bases as well as top secret dumb or deep underground military bases. I think dumb is very appropriate. And the facilities promulgated by Alternative 2. was thus born. It was Nelson's uncle Winthrop Aldrich who had been crucial in convincing Eisenhower to even run for president. The whole Rockefeller family and with them the Rockefeller Empire had solidly backed Eisenhower. Asking Rockefeller for help with the alien problem was to be the biggest mistake Eisenhower ever made for the future of the United States and most probably all of humanity as you will soon see. What he literally did with this act ladies and gentlemen is abdicate the presidency to a secret group. Within one week of Eisenhower's election, he had appointed Nelson Rockefeller chairman of a presidential advisory committee on government organization. Rockefeller was responsible for planning the reorganization of the government. New Deal programs went into one single cabinet position called the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. When the Congress approved the new cabinet position in April of 1953, Nelson was named to the post of undersecretary to Obita Kulp Hobby. In 1953 also, astronomers discovered large objects in space which were moving toward the Earth, and it was first believed that they were asteroids. However, if you know much about astronomy, you know that you can predict or project or project backward orbital paths of bodies in space and determine where they come from, what they're doing, where they're going, and what their orbital path really is. Well, this failed to pan out. And the evidence proved that the objects could only be spaceships intelligently guided. Project Sigma intercepted alien communications, and when the objects reached the Earth, they took up a very high orbit around the equator. There were 